And hello YouTube, this is GS Mama Smart, and I'm today on our brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at GIMP and how to create text with some rays of light coming from behind it. Uh, so it makes it look like the text is coming towards you, and uh, it looks really cool. We are going to also gonna, we're also going to add some sort of glue around the text too. So it should be a pretty easy tutorial. Should learn a lot from it. And if you're new to GIMP, this is definitely a really good technique to add some pizzazz to your text. And uh, if you want to add that text to another design, you can very so easily do so. So first thing we're going to do is go up to File, go to New, and we're going to make a 1280 by 720 image. You can make it as big as you want. Uh, there are some concerns about size that I'm going to go over in just a second, but any dimensions are fine. What we want to do is make sure that our background here is black. So make sure your foreground color is black. Use your bucket tool, press the background, and it will turn black like that. Next thing we're going to do is create three text layers. So grab your text tool here, and you want to create uh, essentially, what I'm going to do is create three words, and two words will be very small on the left and the right side, and one word will be very big in the center. Uh, the center is where we want our most of our glow to be, and we want we want our rays to come from the back of it the most. So it looks like it's emerging from the center, coming towards us. So that's why the middle text is going to be a bit bigger. Left and right text are going to be a bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to create one text layer, and the first one I'm going to do is going to be... You obviously can't see that, so let's change the text color here to white. Let's zoom in a bit. It's going to be greatest. I'm also going to use all capitals because I want this to uh, stand out a bit more. And we're going to go ahead and use a size of 65. Uh, one thing I have noticed, do not try to create text that takes up your entire image. Uh, for example, don't try to create text that's so big like that. If you want to create text this big, you need to have a bigger, a bigger canvas size because the effects we're going to be adding to the text only takes into consideration about um, probably like three-fifths of the image canvas actually in the center. So uh, essentially, realistically speaking, you want to have something that's more center oriented like that. That way the effect uh, works properly. So if you want bigger text, have a bigger canvas. Uh, otherwise, you can use like I'm using right here, just use a smaller form of text and then scale it up when you're finished. Uh, but that's sort of the, the rule that I figured out uh, when I tried to record this the first time my text was a bit too big and looked kind of weird. So we have that. We're going to create another text layer here on the left side, and I'm going to call this uh, the word the. I'm going to use white again. And this time, I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Instead of 65 font, we're going to go ahead and use 45 font. And then I'm going to bring this to the left side here. So I've tried to line this up as best as you can. You can use a ruler if that helps you. Ruler is very good to use as well. And you can sort of line it up like so. And then on the other side, we're going to create another piece of text. And this is going to be, I think I'm going to put the word film. So it'll be the greatest film. And I'm using all capitals for this using white text. And this is also going to be size 45. And we're going to try to line it up with the uh, ruler here. Don't worry about centering this text in the center of your image because we're going to do that with a tool that GIMP has, which is very useful. It's going to bring this over to the left a bit. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to merge these three text layers down, sort of one text layer. So we're going to right click, merge down, right click, merge down. So this entire thing is just one layer. We don't need our ruler anymore, so we're going to bring that all the way to the top. And uh, this layer right here, we're going to make sure we have our alignment tool selected. This is the alignment tool. This centers things for you. So press it and then click your layer here. You see the little dots around it. Make sure you select a center from left to right and center from top to bottom. That will bring it right in the middle. This works for pretty much anything, any text, any objects, any renders, a really uh, useful tool. After that, we're going to right click our layer again and click layer to image size so that the layer becomes the size of the image. And then we're going to duplicate our layer. So right click duplicate and make sure that the bottom duplicate is going to be merged down with the background. Don't merge down the two text layers, merge down one of the duplicates with the background layer, preferably the bottom one. So right click and click merge down and that should merge down uh, the two layers. Now you have a background layer with the text and you have a separate text layer here. So these are the two layers that you should have. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that your background layer is selected with the text, uh, not the uh, standalone text, but the text with the background layer. And go up to Filters, go to Distorts, and head to Polar Coordinates. 
Now you want to make sure the first option is set to 100, second option is set to 0, and make sure out of these three selections, make sure you only have the center one selected. Don't have the left or right selected, only the center, which is map from top. Go and press OK, and that will create this weird thing. Now you want to make sure you click the eyeball for the uh, top layer here for our text because we don't want to see that while we're editing. So we're going to hide that layer pressing the eyeball here. And then make sure the uh, background layer is selected again. What we're going to do is click to image up to image here. Then go to transform and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. That will move it to the right here. Head up to filters one more time. Go to distorts. Go down to wind. And make sure you have 40% or 40 the value 40 for uh, threshold and strength 50 and then make sure you have it set to right we're going to add a left one as well so you can start with left and then go to right either or i'm going to start with right i'm going to press ok and make sure that the uh, uh these options are selected as well as you see make sure you have these exact same ones leading so press ok and we'll get that go to filters one more time go to distorts down to wind one more time and instead of uh, right we're going to select left this time press ok and we get it in both directions. Then we're going to go up to uh, Image, Transform, Rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, so it goes back top to bottom. And then once more, we're going to go to Filters again, Distorts again, Polar Coordinates, and this time make sure you have two polar selected as well, just like that, two polar. Now here's what I was talking about with the text. If your text was bigger, then the circle here, it'll get cut off, and a lot of the effect will get cut off too. So you want to make sure that your text is just small enough so that this circle here can give you this effect and your text is not being cut off and your rays are not being cut off. So this is the important thing to realize when you're selecting your font size. So once we have this here, what we're going to do is use our rectangle tool here, our rectangle tool. We're going to zoom in a bit, and we're going to basically cut out or select our effect, and we're going to draw a selection around it because this is what we want. So draw a selection just like that. Make sure you get the entire effect here, all of your rays down here at the bottom and get your rays up here as well. And uh, it's okay if the rays get cut off from the left and the right a bit because what we wanna do is wanna add uh, black to the outside of this. So you could easily color the outside black if you wanted to. Or you could just do this, what I'm doing, which is creating a rectangular selection around it. But either or, as long as you have this uh, alpha channel here black, you should be okay. Once you have your selection, go up to select, invert, grab your paint bucket tool, and go ahead and color the rest black. Next thing we're gonna do is go up to select, and we can deselect that, so select none. And we're going to go up to Blur again, uh, Filters actually, Filters, Blur, and select Motion Blur this time. And for our X and Y values, make sure you have Zoom selected. And we're going to select, uh, you could select anything from 400 to 500. I'm going to go and select 450 for X and 450 for the Y. Make sure you have your length, once again, anywhere between 40 and 50, I'm going to go ahead and select 45. And we're going to go and press OK. And motion blur can take some time to apply the effect because it's a pretty uh, hefty effect. It takes some resources, but essentially it'll get done and it'll look like that. Um, if it looks kind of weird, you can always change the length, perhaps. I think I might change my length to 40 instead of 45. So blur, motion blur. Uh, zoom and instead of 45 I think I'm gonna bring it down to 40 instead once we have the mer once we have the motion blur set up like that we're gonna go back to our first layer here that we made our text layer that we duplicated go ahead and activate that and you should see now it's on top of the uh, motion blurred layer now if it's not completely on top of it the way you want it to be you can very easily just uh, slowly move it you can click the layer and use your arrow keys to adjust it. Sometimes the uh, zoom motion blur can sort of distort it a bit too much, but uh, you can very easily bring it back into place and sort of align it how you would want it to look. So I think we're gonna go ahead and keep it like that. I think that's a really good, I think that's good right there. That looks good. Next thing we're gonna do is right click our layer here that we just moved. Click alpha to selection, then go up to select, 
go to grow and we're gonna grow it by uh, three pixels perhaps once again up to your preference you could boost it up a little more uh, but three I think is good change our fill color to white foreground color white select our bucket tool once you have the layer at the bottom here make sure your opacity here is up to maximum and we're gonna go ahead and press OK like that now it's kind of hard to tell that this is an A, so perhaps I'm gonna go ahead and grow this by only two pixels. Control Z all the way till you see the dotted lines around your text here. Go to select again, go to grow, and I'm gonna pick two pixels. Uh, the more space your font has in between some of these in between some of these uh, uh, lines here, line fillings here for the letters, uh, the more you can grow it, the more space. The less space it has, the less you can grow it. So I think we're just gonna pick two pixels instead of three. Two pixels instead of three. Go ahead and create another new layer here. Press OK, transparent, bring it down to the bottom or the top, doesn't really matter. And uh, grab your white here, fill it up, and now we can see this is an A, and we can tell still that's an A. So that's good. Uh, go up to select, none, go to filters again, blur, Gaussian blur, and set this amount to, I would say about 10 or 15. Let's try 13. Let's see how that looks. Go ahead and press OK and that looks pretty good there. That gives us that uh, blur sort of. And then uh, we wanna go ahead and move this to the bottom here. Here's where we wanna move it to the bottom because we want our glow to be behind the actual text. Our actual text is on top here, as you can see. The glow's at the bottom here and the rays are behind. So that's what we were looking for. So go ahead and move the actual text layer that has no effects on it to the top. And then we're gonna go up to colors and we're gonna go to invert. So this is black. And as you can see, we have it with this nice glow around it with the with the rays coming from the back. So it looks uh, really cool. But now what we want to do is, in fact, the rays could possibly be a bit longer. Perhaps I should have stayed with a 45 length in the motion blur, but it's okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the color of the rays in the back there. And that's very easy to do as well. So if we wanted to add a blue uh, color for our rays here. We'd go up to make sure you have your background layer selected here uh, Go up to colors color balance and here you can adjust some of the uh, Mid-tones highlights and shadows to create your color uh, for blue We're gonna head to shadows and we're gonna select the values 0 30 and 40 then for mid-tones we're gonna select negative 70 negative 35 and 30 and then for our highlights here, we're going to select negative 85, negative 35, and negative 50 here. And that gives us this uh, nice bluish uh, rays of light. So that's kind of the idea. Obviously, the more experimentation you do with this, uh, the better you can make this look. Just try it out with different uh, wind values. Uh, you know, for different text sizes, it's going to be a bit different. Uh, you can play around with some of the the length of the wind, but this is essentially how you would create your own uh, rays of light behind the text, and you can add a glow like I did here, change the colors you like to do so, and it's fairly easy, and you can obviously perfect this by adding some other effects or uh, doing a bit more work on it. And that's pretty much the tutorial. Hopefully you understood the tutorial and you learned something from it. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment down below in the comment section. I'll be down there answering any questions you have. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. If you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. Plenty of other uh, tutorials on the channel regarding uh, design tutorials, GIMP tutorials, Photoshop, Audacity, Premiere Pro, video editing, lots of cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. And if you'd like to donate to my Patreon page, you can do so. Click the card in the top right-hand corner of the screen. It'll bring you to the page. And if you want to check out my vlogging channel, gaming channel, the music channel, or the advice channel, click the links in the description as well as on the end card. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, as always. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back soon, you think. Don't go anywhere.